Hi, welcome to Community Care Physicians' new educational video series. These videos are for people with diabetes, whether you've been recently diagnosed, whether you've had diabetes for years. Maybe you're a family member or a caregiver of someone with diabetes, or you have prediabetes. This is for everybody. We're going to cover a whole bunch of stuff. Not all at one day. <laughs> My name is Heather Kleitchen. I'm a registered nurse. I'm a certified diabetes care and education specialist. I have been working with people with diabetes for about seven or eight years now. One of the things that I hear a lot of the time is people feeling guilty that they somehow got diabetes. They feel like they failed. What I want to let you know is you didn't fail. It's not your fault. These days, there's so much more information about family history and the heredity of type 2 diabetes. And let's face it, look at the way we live in America. We've got food everywhere. We've got processed foods. We've got fast foods. We've got convenience foods. We eat, you know, whenever we want to, when, when we're in our car, when we're working at our desks, when we're watching TV. This is common for so many Americans, and it's making us unhealthy, and that is partly leading to type 2 diabetes. So I just want to say again, it's not your fault, and all of this video series hopefully is going to help you see that you can really keep good control of this and not have any long-term complications. So um, before we start talking about how to stay healthy with type 2 diabetes, let's just talk about What's going on with your body with type 2 diabetes? <clears throat> Some people ask me sometimes, do I have type 1 or do I have type 2? So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. That's when the cells of your body just attack your pancreas, the cells of your pancreas that make insulin, and they wipe them all out. And the people with type 1 diabetes have to take insulin forever. That's just the way that is. Type 2 diabetes is different in a bunch of ways. Your body is still making insulin, but the problem is the cells of your body, so like your hair cells, your muscle cells, nerve cells, all of the cells of the body have become resistant to your own insulin. When your insulin resistance starts to happen, we eat food, your pancreas makes insulin, but it's just bouncing around, it's not working on the cells, so instead of that sugar going into the cells to be used for energy, it gets stored as fat. And then you end up feeling hungry, you're tired more often, and then you, you eat more. And the whole thing just keeps going on and on and on. So that is what can lead to prediabetes, which can then lead to type 2 diabetes. So at some point in time, we will have a video just for people that are in the prediabetes phase because we can, we've can we got plenty of ways to um, help reduce that and get you um, out of that danger zone, okay? So now that we've got a little better understanding of what's happening in the body, um, the next thing you want to know is the numbers of diabetes. So the biggest one is, of course, hemoglobin A1c. This is what your doctor or your primary care provider has said diagnoses you with type 2 diabetes. So the American Diabetes Association um, diagnoses type 2 diabetes at a hemoglobin A1c of 6.5 or greater. So we've got a little graph, too, to show about what that number looks like when it's your blood sugar and how that makes your A1c look. So I'll tell you one thing about A1c. So it's um, average of your blood sugar on a daily basis for the about 12 weeks before you had it done. So it's a long, complicated um, process that they use in the lab to determine that. So um, we can I can explain that further at some point in time. Um, but this blood this blood test I would like to say is not affected by being fasting or not fasting because a lot of people will say, oh my gosh. I can't have diabetes because I wasn't fasting. That hemoglobin A1c isn't affected by fasting. So again, we can go into that a little bit later on. Um, but that's a number that you need to know. So hemoglobin A1c goals are different for everybody. It depends on your age, on how long you've had diabetes, and any other health conditions you might have, such as high cholesterol, heart disease, 
um, cancer or whatever, um, you want to talk to your healthcare provider about your particular target goals for staying healthy. So the other numbers that get talked about a lot when you have a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is um, your blood pressure and your cholesterol. Because a lot of people that have type 2 diabetes do have high cholesterol and they have high blood pressure. And all of those is what we want to keep in really good management to keep you healthy, protect all your blood vessels, and to prevent any complications. So I know that's a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, I am going to wrap up today's session because that was a lot of information. We've got so many more sessions to go. We're going to talk about healthy eating. We're going to talk about being physically active. We're going to talk about reducing risks, um, how to, you know, to figure out what your challenges are to manage your diabetes. So much coming up. So I really hope that you're going to be joining us. We'll be here every couple of weeks with a new session. Um, but in the meanwhile, I want to ask everybody, just take a few minutes, think about your health, think about what you want your health to look like. Challenge yourself to find one thing, maybe one or two small things, really no things that you can, you know, you know you're going to be able to succeed at that are going to benefit you and make you feel that you're in control of your diabetes because you are. And that's what we're going to keep learning through all of these sessions. Okay. So again, thank you very much. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.